Right, here I am sat in my garage next to my Mixergy IHP cylinder. Now, today I wanted to talk to you about how noisy this is. So we've got this installed in our garage and part of the reason for that was I was a bit worried that the heat pump itself would be too noisy if we installed the cylinder in an airing cupboard. Now, uh, what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna turn it on using the boost mode, which gives me the opportunity to show you how that's done. Uh, we've actually got a little uh, control thing here that you can connect uh, just by a magnet on the back, just sits on your uh, mixergy cylinder like that, and that tells you how much hot water is in your cylinder. And at the moment, you can see that these three, where well, these four red bars show that it's um, somewhere between 40 and 50 percent full, and the blue represents the cold bit. I think personally, this should be the other way round. It should be that way because the hot water is actually at the top, not at the bottom. But uh, you can put it whichever way up you like. It's supposed to be this way up. And the way you control um, the boost function is by pushing these buttons up and down and that just changes um, the controls there. But uh, you can also control it through the app. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the boost on the app um, and the heat pump's gonna turn on so I can show you um, roughly how loud the heat pump is. So let me do that now and uh, let's see what it's all about. So let me set this to something like 75%. If I hit set, It'll take a little while to get going. It'll make some uh, funny noises to start with before the heat pump actually kicks in. And what happens then is that it will start to draw air in uh, through the vents uh, that are uh, installed up, up here, pull air into this one here. It'll do the heat exchanging in the, the heat pump and then the uh, cold air gets spat out through this second vent. Um, and I'll take you outside in a minute as well to show you um, how loud the, the vents are um, as well. So it's now kicked in. This is now running um, Roughly, I'd say this is about as loud as it ever gets. And uh, in my opinion, I think this feels about the same sort of level of volume as um, a washing machine doing a, a wash cycle. So it's probably quieter than a spin cycle, but roughly what you'd expect from a, a kind of standard wash cycle. And in the garage here, we don't hear it at all. Um, when we're in the, the kitchen, the kitchen's behind us um, just here. Uh, we've got uh, an in another internal wall just over there, and then we've got a bedroom directly above. So this garage is an internal garage. It's wrapped around, you know, it, the house wraps all the way around it. Um, so uh, this room actually stays reasonably warm. Um, it doesn't get ever too cold, which means that I'm happy to have this uh, in the garage and it's not going to leak too much heat and I'm, I'll actually show you later in the video why I don't think it's a particular problem having this in the garage even if it gets cold over the winter um, because I've got a spreadsheet obviously that I can use to calculate these things so uh, yeah I don't know it probably doesn't come across super well using the um, microphone that I've got attached to the camera here but yeah it's roughly about as loud as uh, a washing machine so you could install this in an airing cupboard um, the reason we didn't was we want, actually wanted the airing cupboard space as well um, but if you, as long as your airing cupboard was nowhere near a bedroom, this would be absolutely fine in my opinion. You could, um, you know, shut it away and I don't think it would disturb you. However, if the airing cupboard was next to a bedroom, I would worry that if you had this on overnight, for example, if you were heating your hot water during an Octopus Go cheap period, for example, overnight, I would, I would worry that that would disturb me or any guests who were staying. So if I was to install this in an airing cupboard, probably what I would do is, is take the precaution of putting some um, sound insulation board around the inside of the airing cupboard uh, while this was getting installed just to make sure that um, you minimised any potential disturbance. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's how loud it is um, here in our garage, um, but how, how loud is it when uh, we look outside at the vents? Okay, so I've stepped outside briefly to show you the vents and now the one above my head here is the inlet vent where the air gets drawn into the heat pump system. It then does its thing, all the uh, energy gets extracted from the air and then the cold exhaust air gets spat out of this vent here. Now I reckon this is probably about the same sort of volume as a gas flue and um, when that's operating so um, it's not too loud I don't think it disturbs the neighbors at all um, you probably can't hear it super well using uh, the microphone I've got attached to the camera but uh, yeah roughly the same volume as a gas flue exhaust so uh, just to give you an idea of how loud that is right so now I'm back in my natural habitat in front of a spreadsheet so that I can show you why I think that installing the cylinder in the garage 
doesn't really make much of a difference in terms of how much it costs to run. So this is the spreadsheet that I showed in my cost analysis video. If you've not seen that, go and check it out. And it basically involves calculating the standing losses from the cylinder. And that's the really the main important factor for this particular calculation. There's a bunch of other stuff here. I'm not going to go into all of that. Um, go check out that other video if you want all the gory details. But the important point here is that I can change some of these values and that will tell me how much of an impact it makes having a different ambient temperature, for example, when the cylinder is in the garage when it's cold. And uh, I can tell from last year when I was looking at the um, min and max temperature in the garage that it never really got below about 12 degrees in there. So let's start by assuming that you've got your cylinder installed in an airing cupboard and the ambient temperature in that situation would be 20 degrees. So that's what we've got here and that's what I assumed in my original video. Uh, I also assumed in the original video that the average starting temperature of the water going into the cylinder is 15 degrees um, and that's uh, an average between winter at about 10 degrees and summer at about 20 degrees. So I just took an average of those two values. But if we're just talking about the winter here, we can change this value to 10 degrees, which is pretty typical for cold water going into a cylinder in the UK in uh, the depths of winter. And assuming um, an ambient temperature of 20 degrees, we can then go through all these calculations to work out the standing losses for the cylinder if it was installed in an airing cupboard. And if we scroll further down here, we can go through all of these various uh, calculations involving gas and other stuff, but we can ignore all that. And what we're interested in is this section here where I've labeled it IHP electricity required in kilowatt hours per day. So for Cat and I, we're in this situation here where we have a 180 litre cylinder and we use about half of it per day, which means in order to reheat the cylinder from one day to the next, we need a total of 1.52 kilowatt hours of electricity, which gives us a total annual running cost of about £38.88. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take a copy of that cell there, and I'm just going to stick it over here for no particular reason. Now, if we go back up here and we assume actually we've installed the cylinder in our garage, which at its worst gets down to about 12 degrees. So if I select 12 degrees there, and that will then change the various calculations. We've still got inlet temperature of 10 degrees. Now if I scroll back down to where we were before, you can see that we're now using 1.58 kilowatt hours, which gives us a total annual running cost of £40.31. pence. So let's take a copy of that and stick that here. And uh, just for interest, let's see what difference that is. So if I take the difference between this cell and that cell, that's a total of £1.43 for the whole year. Now that's assuming that the entire year is spent with the cylinder at uh, 12 degrees in the garage. But in actual fact, obviously, the garage gets warmer than that during the summer. So this would be um, an absolute worst case scenario of, one, of an additional £1.43 running cost for an entire year of the of the IHP cylinder being in a very cold garage. So you can see why, based on this calculation, I'm pretty happy to accept the fact that our cylinder is installed in the garage and it really won't make very much difference at all to the amount of energy we, we require and the amount of um, uh, cost it takes to heat that cylinder up uh, in addition to what it would have been if it had been installed in the airing cupboard. So there you go. In summary, of course the IHP does make a certain level of noise. All heat pumps do. That's inevitable. Um, but installing it in the garage does ensure that it won't disturb us or any of our guests in any way whatsoever. And the vent isn't loud enough to disturb the neighbours. So I'm pretty happy with our choice. If you were to install it in an airing cupboard, you might get away with it if the airing cupboard was sufficiently soundproofed or was away from bedrooms. That's up to you, really. Um, and uh, of course, if you do install it in the garage, the difference in ambient temperature hopefully doesn't really make too much of a difference in terms of running costs. So I think we made the right choice in installing it in the garage. Uh, if you wanted to in, uh, install an IHP in either location, that would be entirely up to you, but uh, I'm sure you'd be happy with your choice either way. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that useful and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.